Hi guys, this is Mia. Welcome back to my channel. Since I've been getting quite a bit of requests to do more animal paintings, I decided to paint a mini hedgehog today. So let's just begin by drawing it out first so we can break it down into more understandable steps. I'm going to draw them in three positions and the first one is just a side view. For this, I'm going to create a stone shape, if stones have shapes, where the head on the left side is slightly smaller than the back. Then for the spines on the back, I like to always give an outline to separate the soft and spiky parts of the hedgehog. The forehead area usually dips down slightly and where the sides come up, that's where I like to position the ears. And then for the nose, I like to extend a small bit forward and just add a tiny small nose at the tip. Then add the rest of the features like the eyes and the feet. Moving on to the second position, this is my favorite one. For this, I like to create something like an egg shape where the head is smaller than the bottom part. But I try to make the head a bit rounder so it looks cuter. Then for the area of the spines again, I'm going to create a dip on the forehead but this time I'm also going to add a slight dip at the bottom also so the body looks slightly curled up. Then finishing up with the rest of the features like the eyes and nose. Sometimes these hedgehogs also have masks or slightly brown areas in their face and this is usually darker around the nose and the eyes so I'm just going to indicate that as an example. This time I'm also going to add a little heart as a prop and you can change this up if you would like to. I think flowers would also look really cute and then to finish everything off, I made the hands look like it's hugging the heart and I also added longer feet in different lengths so the position looks more natural. For the third one, I made the hedgehog more curled up and close to a spiky ball but the features basically remain the same as the previous drawing just a little bit more squished though even though this one is more curled i still made the head area smaller than the bottom but at the same time they're also more round by the way these basic shapes doesn't have to be perfect i like to also curve them slightly in a way to make the shape slightly different It'll just give a slightly different character to each of them if they're drawn differently. You can also play around with the angles by positioning the spines differently. So if I want to curve the base shape slightly to the left and I want to create the body slightly tilting, I would also position that dip in the head more to the left so you're able to see the spines on the back on the right hand side. And these are just examples of what you can do if you would like to change up the positions. Moving on to the colors, I'm going to use different tones of browns that I have such as sepia, burnt umber, and also yellow ochre. Then I'm also going to add on permanent yellow deep in the palette as well as quin red and Chinese white. I'm also going to use a tiny bit of white gouache for the highlights for the eyes, but you can also use white pen if you have access to it. Let's start to paint. I first started out by drawing out the main base shape so I know where to place them in the composition. Then I'm going to start with the top one. And for this I use burnt umber, but you can use any of the browns on your palette. And with this I just drew out a dashed line to separate the sections of the spine and the belly. Before I start to fill in those areas, I mixed up a pink color from using Quin Red, Yellow Ochre, White, and a touch of Burnt Umber. And I used this to paint the ears, which I'm going to place on either side of the dip. This is so I don't forget because in my trial paintings, when I painted the spikes straight away, I tend to forget to leave a space for the ears. So I had to paint over it and the ears weren't as visible as I wanted it to be, which is why I'm painting this first. Next I'm going to paint the spikes and for this I do a flicking motion to create the texture of the spike loosely and to enhance the roundness of the back I made sure that the little spikes are painted according to the direction of the contour line which will help give a more rounded look. 
paint this, I like to alternate between the browns that I have on my palette, even while the paint is still wet so the colors can blend naturally. And this will give more interest to the painting because it's such a large area in comparison to the rest of the body that if I were to only use one tone of brown, it would flatten the painting and it would look quite boring. And for this, I'm using my size 14 Reefs brush, but if it's harder to control the water flow, you can also use a smaller brush. Just make sure that your brush load isn't too heavy or else you'll end up creating puddles and it'll be really hard to control. If that does happen, just use a tissue to dab everything off the paper and start again. But if it's still a bit hard for you to gauge how much load you have on your brush you can also try it out on a scrap piece of paper first and make sure that it's not puddling wet After this, I'm going to skip to the next hedgehog first because that area is still very wet and I don't want to disrupt it. And I'm just going to leave it to dry. Meanwhile, I use the same mixture to paint the ears. Then I'm going to do the same for the separation by creating a dashed line around the hedgehog by using burnt umber. If this is difficult to freehand, you can also draw it out with pencil first if you would like to. For this, I like to direct the spikes outwards around the belly. I'm still going to alternate the colors, but you can also just use one color for this because it might be a bit difficult to fit different colors in a small space. As for the application, I use the same flicking motion, but this time I created a rotation around the belly instead of having one direction. When I'm painting around the ears, I like to leave a little bit of white space so there's a clear separation. If not, the pinkish brown color will just blend with the rest of the spikes. You can also use lighter pinks for the ears by not using any of the burnt umber in the mixture if you would like a lighter tone for a bit more contrast from the dark brown of the spikes. I'm going to repeat this again for the third hedgehog using the same colors for the ears and also the same dashed line. For the contour of this one, it's quite similar to the previous um, hedgehog but since more of the spikes are showing, I like to create a little bit of curvature around the contour of the body to give it more of a rounded effect. Because you're able to see a lot of the spines for this one, I would also suggest to do the color alteration just like the first hedgehog by using different tones of browns. I also realized after I painted this that the bottom looked a bit too flat for my liking, so at the very end I actually extend it down, but it's really up to you how flat or round you want the bottom to be out of preference. Here I realized that the position of the heart was a bit too high so I erased it and lowered the position. By now the spines of the hedgehog should also be dry so I'm going to start painting the softer part of the body. For this I used a mix of yellow ochre, permanent yellow deep and Chinese white. I also added a mixture from the ears which makes the color a bit more creamy but if you want it to be more of a yellow hue you can skip adding the pinkish brown. 
For this I made sure that my paint is very watery so the color is very light because I want to create a good contrast between the body and the spines and while the paint is still slightly wet I also added the tiny feet using the same color mixture for the ears. I used the thick consistency for this because I wanted the paint to blend slightly where it's touching the body and then I cleaned and dried my brush and then moved the colors around to create a softer blend between those two colors. Moving on to the second hedgehog, while I wait for the first one to dry, I made a pink color for the heart using a mixture of quin red and white and this will create a very vibrant pink but I also added a tiny bit of brown to mute the color slightly. This is because I prefer more natural colors but again you can use the pink by itself if you prefer saturated colors. When I paint the heart I left out some space for the toes or the hands. I did this first so I don't forget then I also place where I would like the highlights to be before filling in the rest of the space. I want to wait for the heart to dry completely first so I moved on to the third hedgehog and painted the tummy and the head using the same mix as the first hedgehog. After I'm done, I moved back to the second one and did the same thing but while the paint is still damp, I also added some of the browns either sepia or burnt umber mixed into the light brown in a thin consistency. Then I placed this around the stomach area just to create a slight discoloration between some parts of the body which has slightly darker fur and I think it also makes the painting look less flat. I used the thin consistency because I don't want to create sudden contrast in colors and this way it's also manageable to get a nice blend and if you would like to create an even darker color you can also layer in more colors if you would like to. I also placed this for the face and the nose area for the same reason but again you can always build up on the color. I left it as it is for the time being because I want to see how it looks like with a darker color for the nose which I'm going to use a mixture of sepia and burnt umber and after I've placed that then I can gauge on whether I want the mask to be slightly darker in tone or just leave it at this. The key is to just work on separate pieces first and then balance and layer on more colors so you don't accidentally create something that's a little bit too dark because it's always harder to take off color than to add with watercolors. Next I'm going to paint the little toes using the same color mixture for the ears and while I wait for this to dry I also painted the rest of the features like the eyes and I also made a tongue stick out of the hedgehog in the middle just to give it a little bit of expression. I also added nails to the toes but this is optional. If you do want to add them though I would suggest to use a very thick consistency paint using a dry brush technique in order to create those tiny brush markings. After painting the little features, this is where I add final touches. I like to add slightly darker tones of brown in a thin consistency around the hands holding the heart, then blend it with the rest of the body to create a fluffier texture. Again, this is where you can also layer on darker colors for the mask or darker fur because you have all of the features down and you're able to balance everything out easily because it's easier to visualize. For the final touch up, I also added an outline for the heart to separate the shape and add additional layer to the spikes on the first hedgehog because the colors were drying a little bit too light in certain areas. Then I also added the highlights using a very thick consistency white gouache to make the eyes pop out and look a bit cuter.
this is also where I realized I wanted to add the darker fur around the face so I used my small brush for this in order to limit the water load so I don't ruin the face by disturbing the paint with too much water. Lastly, I figured that the bottom hedgehog looked a little bit too squished, so I decided to extend the spikes at the bottom to turn it more into a ball shape. And that's pretty much the finished painting. It would also be really cute if you add little decorative elements to this like leaves or flowers, but I'm just going to leave it here for now. Like usual, all of the tools and links to my social media will be placed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!